Um, the topic you've all been waiting for, alcohol. Wonderful, wonderful alcohol. One of the number one questions I get from new clients, do I have to stop drinking alcohol? Whether it's beer, wine, whiskey, for me it was whiskey, whatever. It's amazing, not today, hey Deborah. It is amazing how pervasive alcohol is in everyone's lives. It's crazy. Happy Tuesday, Alana. Bum, 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 bum. Give it a couple minutes, see who else hops on. Weather has been fantastic. I love being in my car and not having to turn the heater on. So I had an idea that probably won't ever happen, but I just found out, I didn't realize this, that Maria and Craig Emmerich have a condo in Hawaii that they rent out. They have two of them, actually. I think one, I think both of them each hold like five people. How cool would it be to get a group of people to go to Hawaii for a week and hang out with the Emmeriches? That would be cool. Oklahoma. What's up, Jennifer? I feel like, uh, who is it? Who's on that show now? Drew Carey now and The Price is Right. Like, come on. There you go, Jennifer. Come on down. If only I had a big spinny wheel and we could spin for, that'd be cool. But you all would have to be in costumes. So that's the only way it would work. All right, let's talk about alcohol, guys. Everybody loves alcohol. I like alcohol. It's amazing. Not really, um, but it's enjoyable. <laughs> it's amazing, but it's not really. All right, the big question about alcohol, um, and I don't, honestly, I don't even know if it's a question. I think the question is really when people ask, do I have to stop drinking alcohol? They already know the answer. I think the real question is, if I have alcohol, what is it going to do and how much is it going to mess me up and keep me from reaching my goal? Because I want to have alcohol. I think that's the real conversation. The real conversation most of the time is not really, can I do, you know, can I not, do I have to stop alcohol? Can I have alcohol? Yes or no. Um, because most people realize that alcohol is a poison. It's a toxin. Um, and no matter what it does, how it makes us feel, there is no benefit from alcohol. Okay. Uh, so that is really the biggest thing that comes, comes to light when you're talking, when I'm talking with a new client, when you're thinking about what am I going to do for my life, things I need to change. Uh, and it's a tough thing to stop until you realize what it's doing and the impact that it has in how much it really is keeping you off track, okay? Um, just for your guys' reference, I'm gonna be pulling the topics for this talk right off of my blog. I have a blog that is titled the same as this um, chat is, it's just one drink. So if you go to the, a a a the Apex website, go to articles and just look for um, the blog titled, it's just one drink, I, there's more detail, there's some links. Um, and some graphs and stuff that you can look at, okay? Uh, the impact that alcohol has. I did not realize how impactful it was in my own life, okay? You may have heard me talk about this before, but early on in my journey trying to learn about this stuff and figure this stuff out, I did a 21-day sugar detox. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that before. It's a program that's very good. It's, very, uh, very, it's a very good program to follow for, for a short term, 21 days, kind of reset and learn what things are happening to your body. For me, the biggest change that I made in that 21 days was stop drinking alcohol. I used to drink about three to four, you know, glasses of bourbon a week, uh, one every night, every other night, something like that. Um, I would consider myself a bourbon aficionado. 
uh, although not anymore because I realized what I was doing. Just in three weeks, in three weeks, guys, okay, think about this, in three weeks, okay, 21 days, I stopped drinking three to four glasses, okay, one, two finger glasses of bourbon. I lost 10 pounds. I didn't lose 10 pounds of body weight. I lost 10 pounds of body fat. Doing a body composition scan before and after, my lean mass stayed exactly the same. I lost 10 pounds of fat. Just the only thing I changed, I didn't change my workouts. I didn't change my diet. I was already pretty much sugar free. I was already whole foods. I was already animal, more animal, more protein based. Um, I still did do more vegetables, way more than I do now, since I don't do any now. Um, but I was, I was pretty much all whole foods. Uh, it, it was just alcohol that was holding me back. 21 days. Stop drinking alcohol. I lost 10 pounds of body fat. Literally 10 pounds of fat came off my body in three weeks. That's more than three pounds a week, guys. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. And it it was a slap in the face. Like, what is going on? I don't understand how just stopping alcohol made such a change. So I did some research. Um, started looking up a bunch of things and then everything in this blog, everything we're going to talk about is a lot of the stuff that I found. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about first off, what does your body do? What happens? Um, and yeah, let's talk about that. What happens when you when you take in alcohol? Okay. Uh, without getting into all of the sciencey breaking down of all the different components of alcohol and things breaking down into acetate and all that kind of stuff. We're basically going to talk about starting first with oxidative priority. We've talked about this in other videos and alcohol is at the top of the list, guys. It is the number one thing that your body wants to process whenever it enters the body. So no matter what else you've eaten, no matter how fat adapted you are, your body wants to process alcohol over anything else. Okay, just think about that. Your body wants to process alcohol over anything else, all right? Um, so when you ingest alcohol, particularly when you ingest alcohol while you're eating, which is when most of us do it, wine at dinner, whiskey after dinner, right? I go out to eat, have a, a Bloody Mary, whatever it may be, a mimosa at breakfast, right? There's, there's always seems to be food around. Even if you're not at a meal, you're at a party, there's food around, right? It's, there's always alcohol and food. They go together. Think about if alcohol is at the top of the list and your body has to burn the alcohol first, has to utilize and, and use it up before it can get to everything else, then when you're drinking that mixed drink, when you're drinking and eating at the same time, what is happening to all of the fat and carbs that you're ingesting while you're drinking alcohol? If your body can't do anything with it, what's going to happen to it? Okay. Um, your body can't process it. But your, your body's going to, your body's going to break it down and it's going to do stuff with it, but it can't burn it as fuel. So it's got to go somewhere. I, I can't burn this right now because I'm burning alcohol. Alcohol has pushed itself into the front of the line. I can't burn it for fuel. So when we talk about fuel calories, those calories, that, that, that material has to go somewhere. So where's it going to go? Right? It's going to turn into fat. If you're drinking alcohol a lot, even if it's not a lot, but it's consistent and it's regular, like I wasn't drinking a lot, I was drinking one glass. One glass, three to four times a week. Right? It's not like I was having two glasses every night. Okay? It's not like I was drinking at, at lunch and then coming home and drinking after dinner. It was one glass uh, three, four, three to four times a week. Okay, just stopping that consistency, just stopping that con consistent input of alcohol made me lose 10 pounds in three weeks. Okay. So it's, uh, your body has to do something with fuel when you ingest it. If it can't, because you've ingested something that takes, that cuts to the front of the line, it's got to store it. I can't do anything with it. I've broken it down. I've, I've got it all here ready to go, but I can't do anything with it. Let's put it on your hips. Let's put it in your belly. Let's put it on your back. Let's put it in your face. Let's put it in your feet. Let's put it on your thighs. Wherever it may be, let's put it in your fingers. Wherever it can shove it, it's going to shove it. Okay? So that's number one. 
Number one thing about alcohol is it's going to hijack your metabolic process and it's going to prevent you from losing fat. Okay. Think about that. Every time you're ready to have a drink, think about that. If I have this drink for the amount of time it takes me to process my body to process and burn all this alcohol, I won't be burning fat. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Um, beyond that, when we talk about alcohol being a poison, here's why it's a poison. Alcohol literally increases inflammation and stress in your body. The minute you ingest alcohol, your body goes, ah, I don't know what to do with this. Okay. It doesn't have this. You cannot store alcohol. Your body has to burn it. So it has to do something with it. When it does, it is a highly, highly, um, I'll say toxic, a highly inflammatory process, okay? Here's a couple of things. Let's talk about hormones for a second. Here's a couple of things that happen when you drink alcohol. Cortisol is increased. Drinking alcohol raises cortisol. Cortisol is the hormone of stress. That fight or flight process that we have in our body when something stressful happens and, and our, our body needs to be ready to respond at any second, right? That uh, your the hair stands up on your head, your heart rate increases, your blood pressure, blood pressure increases, all these things happen to our body in response to uh, stress. That's what happens when you drink alcohol, okay? Your body instantly goes into fight or flight and then it's there the whole time your body's processing that. So when you consistently have it, Okay, you are consistently putting yourself in an inflammatory state. That's what we call chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation, we're going to do the chain here. Chronic inflammation is the cause of many illnesses and chronic issues that people have, right? Autoimmune issues and all kinds of other stuff come from chronic inflammation. IBS, right? Gut issues. There's just a ton of things that come from consistently having cortisol high and our body always being turned on, ready to go, never being in a state of recovery, what we call an anabolic state, okay? And that's the next part about that. So cortisol rises and our body's in fight or flight. That means it's in burning, it's in utilization mode, okay? So that's what we call a catabolic state. That is where your body has to use materials to be ready to function and to function. It's constantly working and it increases and works more, okay? So when when cortisol rises, we get into a chronic inflammation state, we get into a catabolic state where we are now burning and not building, right? We wanna be in an anabolic state as much as possible where we're building, building muscle, not burning material, okay? Um, what, that ha what happens there basically is that, uh, and I'm gonna just read this here, alcohol decreases hormones that build muscle tissue, okay? So cortisol rises, right? We go into a catabolic state. Catabolic state means we're, we're tearing down muscle, literally, okay? The muscle, the hormones that we need to build muscle are IGF-1 and testosterone. When we drink alcohol, our body suppresses the creation generation of IGF-1 and, and testosterone. Our testosterone goes down. Our cortisol goes up. All of the things about building and growing and recovery and repair get, sh get shut down, okay? Alcohol basically says, nope, not gonna happen, All right? I'm going to burn and use and break down instead because I've got this stuff in my body. I really don't know what to do with it. So I gotta figure it out, right? Your body's freaking out. That's why this is happening, okay? The other thing that happens when we talk about hormones is uh, if testosterone is going down, then guess what is going up, right? Alcohol inhibits your body, your body's ability to break down estrogen. Okay. It basically says, I don't know what to do with this stuff. So I can't break it down and use it. So what happens? Your estrogen rises. Okay. We don't want that imbalance. So we don't, alcohol is something that's going to give us an overabundance of estrogen in our bodies. That's also not something that we want. So basically when we talk about hormones, Alcohol messes up all sorts of hormones, okay? If you have hormone issues, if you have any issues that are related to chronic inflammation, 
If you have any issues that are related to gut health, we haven't even talked about gut health. Um, that's a whole section I haven't even gotten into yet. The next time we have a gut specialist on, somebody remind me that we want to talk about alcohol and gut health. Um, uh, yeah, it's just it's it's just messes up all sorts of hormone stuff. Okay, I, I hope I'm not making anybody super depressed. Uh, this is not this is not necessarily a talk where I want to convince everyone not to have alcohol. What I want you to do is to understand what it's doing so that you can make your choice. Okay, it's always 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 about what is this doing to me if I have this. Am I willing to deal with that for this period of time and enjoy it, right, or not? Uh, is it going to hurt me in the long term? Is it going to help me? Is it going to matter at all? You have to make that decision for yourself. I've gone from drinking, you know, one glass three to four times a week to I probably have uh, a glass of whiskey. It's at this point, it's probably once every four months maybe longer, right? I just, it's not something that I, uh, that I'm willing to do most of the time because most of the time I'll think about, oh, I should have a glass. You know, I'm not doing anything tonight. You know, it'll be a Friday night. I'm kind of chill, uh, not doing anything, no plans, kind of sitting at home, whatever. And now look at my, my cabinet. I've got still, I think I've got 12 or 13 different bottles of bourbon sitting there. And uh, I'm like, oh, I should have a glass. And then I'll just think, well, but you know what? I have to get up in the morning and go work out. And if I do that, uh, my workout's probably going to suck. And then because my inflammation's increased for my workout, because of the alcohol, my recovery, I'll probably be sore for longer. Like I just think about the different things that are going to affect me if I have that alcohol. And most of the time I decide not to have it. So just something to think about, guys. It's information that you can have. I'm not trying to tell any of you never to drink alcohol again. I know plenty of people that that have uh, alcohol as part of their daily life, and it's it, daily. I should say weekly life, maybe. Uh, I don't know many. I don't know many fit, healthy people that drink alcohol every day, um, but I do know people that it's part of their lifestyle. And maybe on the weekend they'll go out and have a couple of drinks, um, but they they understand what it's doing. They understand the impact. And they've figured out how to work with it and make it fit their routine and still enable uh, and have a routine that still enables them to reach the goal, right? So it's possible, um, but you just need to understand where you are. And is, is it a risk? Is it something that you want to deal with at this point? Okay. Um, all right. So that's hormones. We talked about oxidative priority, all the different hormone stuff. Uh the biggest thing, guys, on the hormones is just remember, it's the, the whole idea of being catabolic versus anabolic is really what my big priority is. I want you guys and I want as many people as possible to understand the importance of building lean mass and building strength and being in a growth state as much as possible. OK, eat the protein, work the muscles. Get your body into that, that state where it's growing, improving its metabolic performance and efficiency so that you can be healthy. A healthy metabolism is health. A functioning metabolism is what the definition of being healthy is. Um, your metabolism is literally how your body functions. Okay. So the more lean mass you can have, the better your body is going to be going to function, the healthier you're going to be. All right. And when you drink alcohol, you you basically turn that whole process off. And that's what I want, want you to be aware of. All right. One of the biggest things that you can do to increase the amount of time that you are in an anabolic building growth recovery state is to improve your sleep. The, that, the better sleep you get, the more sleep you get, the more um, testosterone, the more IGF-1, the more time you spend in an anabolic state, the better off you're going to be. Your immune system is going to get better. You're going to recover from workouts and injury better. You're going to build lean mass better. You're going to get stronger. But everything, right? You're, the, the, the time you are asleep is the single most important time of your day because it is the highest 
amount and most concentrated amount of anabolic um, time that you have in your day. In a 24 hour period, the eight, seven to eight to nine hours that you are asleep is when your body is doing the most to repair, rebuild, and improve your metabolic efficiency, okay? Sleep, sleep, sleep is so super important, all right? Alcohol screws up sleep, okay? Alcohol does all sorts of stuff to our brain that basically makes us think that we're asleep, but in reality, the body is still functioning and we never actually get into an anabolic state. So, so not only does alcohol raise our cortisol level, get us into fight or flight, get us into a, a state of inflammation and stress, but even when we're sleeping and we're trying to turn on the anabolic process, it's restricting and reducing the amount of IGF-1 and testosterone, and it's playing mind, it's playing games with our brain chemistry, making our body think that we're asleep when we're really not. So any benefits that you get from sleep while you're drunk are actually non-existent. You're actually going the other direction, okay? Even though you may pass out, right? You're out, you're out like a light. You're not getting any, there's no regenerative restorative processes that are happening during that time, okay? So something that, think about that. When you wake up, how do you feel? You feel like crap because you've just done all sorts of stuff to your hormones and the chemistry of your body, okay? So there was no healing at that time. But you want, um, there we go, I'm back, all right? So yeah, that's uh, that's basically it, guys. There's a lot of stuff to, to understand about oxidative priority and how alcohol uh, kind of jumps into the front of the line and messes up how, you, how your metabolism functions with other macronutrients. Um, understand that it does all of the things to your hormones that we don't want to do to our hormones, and it messes up our sleep, which is robbing us of the prime time for recovery and rebuilding for our metabolism, all right? Those are the three big things. Uh, the gut stuff, I didn't, I don't know why I didn't even think about the, to put that stuff in here to do research on that. Um, I'm going to add that to my list of things and maybe we can include that in the future. All right, does anybody have any questions? I hate to, I know that sounded very serious and down and like, oh my gosh, I can never have alcohol again, right? Guys, have a glass of alcohol if you want to. Have a glass of beer, have a glass of wine. Don't make it something that's regular. And as always, I, you know, like I say, track, track, track. If you're not seeing progress and you are regularly drinking alcohol, try not and see what happens. Right? If you get to a point where you're happy with things and you, and you say, hey, I want to have a glass of alcohol this week and you feel like crap, then you know, hey, maybe that's not something that I should do. Or maybe I should try something different or whatever. Play around with it. This is your life. This is information for you to use to determine, one, how can you reach your goals? Okay. Two, how can you reach your goals, but also maintain a sustainable quality of life so that you're not stressed and feel like crap about what you're doing to reach your goals? That's the key. That is the key to success, guys. You've got to find a balance between enjoyment and efficiency and merge the two. If everything that you do in your life is about being the most efficient dieter and exerciser, and there's no enjoyment to anything that you're doing, it's not gonna last. It is not gonna last. You've gotta have both, okay? So that's why I say your life, your quality of life is an important aspect of your plan and how you go about reaching your goal, okay? if you feel like you need to have a, a time to kind of let go every once in a while and just de-stress from thinking about nutrition, thinking about exercise. And I wanna just kind of let it go and have this glass of wine, okay? That's awesome. Have that glass of wine. Just remember after that glass of wine, I have a goal that I still do wanna to get to and I can't forget about it all the time. Just one time I needed a little break and I wanna have the glass, this glass of wine. That's cool. I understand what it's doing. I'm not going to make it a regular thing. Okay. So you've got to figure out where that conversation ha happens in your own head and how you apply that information to your life. Okay. Balance efficiency in what you're doing to reach your goal 
with your lifestyle and enjoyment. You still need to enjoy your life, guys. Don't stress over this so much. Enjoy your life. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Um, we got a few people on here still. Oh, I see 17 comments. Whoa, I didn't see his comments before. Hold on. Um, okay, stop it. Dreaming about it now. Um, yay, tree stump again. I just saw that, Alana. Audio keeps cutting out. Did, it, did the audio pick up again? I don't, you don't like the way, okay, Kim, I don't like the way alcohol makes me feel anymore either. Make an informed choice. That's what this is all about. Absolutely. Hi, Lindy. Um, Lindy, I started low moderate resistance machines a few weeks ago. Started PE wave eating. Yes. Muscle, even though I'm not. Yes, Lindy, you absolutely could be putting on some muscle. Um, I highly recommend um, getting some kind of a body scan. Okay. If you can. It's still cutting out and freezing. Well, I'll keep talking and maybe it'll pick up because I don't see it freezing on this end. That's weird. 14 FPS. Oh, it is crappy. All right. Um, Lindy, get a body, uh, body composition scan. We can, you can ask about that in the group and, uh, we'll, we'll get to you. I'll give you some ideas for that. Um, Deborah. Upping your protein is great. Probably not a great idea to up your fat as well. Upping your protein is going to help you increase lean mass and increase thermogenesis and improve your metabolic efficiency. But um, adding your, increasing your fat could actually increase the amount of fat in your body as well, depending on what you're doing, where you're at. I don't know all the details, but for the most part, increasing your protein is awesome. Most people don't need to increase their fat. Um, cool. It's not it's not spotty for you, Alana. That's weird. Okay. Yeah, like I'm getting my report here. It kind of shows that it's great and then not great, but I don't know what that means. It's where it's red and blue and green at the same time. All right, guys, that is good for today. If anybody has any questions, as always, please ask in the group. If there's any follow-up, just comment on here. Um, and I hope that was information you can use. All right. Uh, take it easy. We'll see you next week and have fun.